2020. Slightly blurry morning, so I do hope you can hear me all right. Today we've been asked to remember Hildegard of Bingdon. So a little bit about her today. Hildegard was born in 1098 at Bockenholm in Germany. From her earliest years, she had a powerful visionary life, becoming a nun at the age of 18, much influenced by her foster mother, Jatta, who had set up the community and whom she succeeded as abbess in 1136. Her visions of light, which she described as the reflection of the living light, deepened her understanding of God and creation, sin and redemption. They were, however, accompanied by repeated illness and physical weakness. About 20 years later, she moved her sisters to a new abbey at Bingdon. She travelled much in the Rhineland, founding a daughter house and influencing many, including the Emperor Frederick Barbosa. She was a pastor and teacher, seeing herself as a feather on the breadth of God. She wrote three visionary works, a natural history and a medical compendium. She died on this day in 1179. So there we have her, Hildegard, who we've been asked to remember today. So lovely that you have joined us as we come together to worship. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 14. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth to see if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. But everyone has turned back. All alike have become corrupt. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they ate bread and do not call upon the Lord? There shall they be in great fear, for God is the company of the righteous. Though they would confound the counsel of the poor, yet the Lord shall be their refuge. Oh, that Israel's salvation would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God of heaven, look with mercy on all who are consumed by ignorance and greed, and let the children of earth know that you are our God forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading today, our first reading, is continuation of 1 Kings, and today it's chapter 4, 29 to verses 5, 12, to chapter 5, 12. God gave Solomon very great wisdom, discernment, and breadth of understanding, as vast as the sand on the seashore. 
so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, wiser than Ethan, the Ezerite, and Heman, Calcol, and Dardra, children of Mahol. His fame spread throughout all the surrounding nations. He composed 3,000 proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. He would speak of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows in the wall. He would speak of animals and birds and reptiles and fish. People came from all the nations to hear the wisdom of Solomon. They came from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. Now, King Hiram of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon when he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father for Hiram had always been a friend to David. Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying, You know that my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord, his God, because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. So I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord said to my father David, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name. Therefore commanded that cedars from the Lebanon be cut for him. My servants will join your servants, and I will give you whatever wages you set for your servants, for you know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidians. When Hiram heard the words of Solomon, he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord today, who has given to David a wise son to be over the, this great people. Hiram sent word to Solomon, I have heard the message that you have sent to me. I will fulfill all your needs in the matter of cedar and cypress timber. My servants shall bring it down to the sea from the Lebanon. I will make it into rafts to go by sea to the place you indicate. I will have them broken up there for you to take away, and you shall meet my needs by providing food for my household. So Hiram supplied Solomon's every need for timber of cedar of Cyprus. Solomon in turn gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household and 20 cores of fine oil. Solomon gave this to Hiram year by year. So the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, as he promised. This was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for our canticle, the Song of the Covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and the spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to, be op to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Our second reading this morning is continuation from Acts, and it's Acts chapter 15, verses 1 to 21. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no, had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they went on their way by the church and as they passed both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles 
and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done for them. But some believers, who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees, stood up and said, It is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to, co to consider this matter. After they had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did so to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simon has related how God first looked favourably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. From its ruins, I will rebuild it and I will set it up so that all other peoples may seek the Lord even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord, who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore I have reached the decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and from blood. For in every city for generations past, Moses has had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogues. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for our responsory. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And now for the Benedictus. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall not mount up with wings as an eagle. 
let us pray. I'm using this morning prayers from Common Worship. In peace, let us pray to Jesus our Lord, whoever lives to make intercession for us. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people and the work of your Church in every land. And we continue to pray for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, and for all the work that she does and behind the scenes, for Joe, our Archdeacon, and for all lay and ordained who minister not just across our benefice, our deanery, but across our diocese and beyond. Wherever you are this morning, you just pray for our local church, our community and our building. our prayer. We pray for those particularly who are preparing for ordination in our diocese on the 26th, Sunday the 26th, and for our readers who are going to be licensed this Sunday. So we lift them to you, O Lord. And for all those who are taking funerals this week, for those who are taking weddings this week and for those who are taking baptisms for all our occasional offices Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer Shepherd and guardian of our souls guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place so as we pray for wisdom for all in authority, we bring to mind our local councils and our local government, particularly at this time when life is not easy with the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. And in a moment of quiet, we lift to you, O Lord, all those who have asked us for prayers at this time and for all those who are needing prayer. Heavenly Father, we name all those on our hearts who today have asked for prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those for whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of eternal victory. So as we remember those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, for those who are preparing for funerals, and for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our colleagues for today, most glorious and holy God, whose servant Hildegard, strong in the faith, was caught up in the vision of your heavenly courts. By the breath of your Spirit, open our eyes to glimpse your glory and our lips to sing your praises with all the angels.
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as the Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all of those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Just a little bit, it's more the wind than the birds. So, and so lovely that you've joined us and it's lovely to read your comments as well. So wherever you are today, please do keep safe, keep connected and keep praying. And whatever you're up to, have a good day. God bless. Do join us for night prayer tonight at six o'clock. Otherwise, I'll see you again for morning prayer tomorrow at nine. God bless you all. Bye for now.